Hello everybody, and welcome back to Chameleon Twist 2. We've got Toyland ahead of us, and for this one, I'm actually gonna have to do something a little bit different. You might have noticed that in all these levels, or in all the ones thus far, we've had a carrot that we need to pick up in order to do that level's minigame. Well, this one is no different, however, the carrot actually appears after the minigame opportunity. So, I'm gonna jump in here, fast forward all the way to the carrot pickup, and then fast forward again until I come back around for the second playthrough of the level, and then collect all the gold coins. So it's gonna look a little segmented, but here we go. So, we'll skip ahead to picking up the carrot right now. And here we go. Excellent! Alright, so I'll skip ahead to after I've beaten this level, so that way we can get all the gold coins and beat this level proper. So here we go! And here we are, back in the main menu, of course we have the Pyramid Land available to us, but we need to get all the gold coins from Toy Land in order to complete this Manifest Destiny that we've started from all of the gold pr coins in the previous levels. So let's jump back into Toy Land, and I'm actually gonna show the level and not do a crazy weird speed run where I only pick up six gold coins, because ain't nobody got time for that! Now with this one, it's of it's kind of similar, this honestly, love this level reminds me a lot of the, um, Toy- or not Toy- the, like, Candy Land from the first Chameleon Twist game. A uh, nice, fun, happy little level that's actually kind of difficult and kind of challenging in some, part, in some parts. Similar to the previous level, we have a training session, or a training game, as our bunny rabbit friend likes to call it, that is mostly consistent of just using various skills. This one's a little tricky, honestly. This one took me a couple tries before I was able to get in my practice run. So let's see if I can get it on the first try. That would be pretty neat. Now with these, these first, like, this first... I guess couple groups of platforms. They're not so bad because even when the platform is fully retracted, at least m there's a piece of it that juts within the walls, so you can kind of play your cool and, and just time it. But for these last two platforms, as you'll see, they recede all the way back into the wall, so you've got to be super schmancy with your timing. But I think we'll be in good shape if I can, there we go, just use the wall right behind it, and we are in good shape. Hey, look at that, setting a new record, I'll fucking take it. Hot damn. Exit. There we are. So just to show how that looks, I guess you could say that there are a couple parts where we use similar skills to that. Um, now one thing that's kind of cool, the little present box that we started in, the little gift box we started in, is now back. And if we really wanted to, we could hop back on top of it. Oh wait. Hop back on top of it. There we go. And then it'll still do the little bouncing thing. Let's see, I picked up the gold coin that was here. Excellent, excellent. And yes, just to point out, we do have five carrots now. Of course, you saw where I picked it up. I'll point it out the spot where I had to deviate in order to pick it up, but it's, uh, it's, it was pretty well hidden, honestly. I had to look it up in order to find where it was. This was a, it was a nice challenge. Another well, speaking of things that are well hidden, this guy right up here, oh, shit. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. We should be able to make it back. Um, just get on top of this thing here. No, shit. All right. Let's do a regular tongue boost. There we are. Really well placed. Another, another well hidden little gem there. I, um, I really don't know of a better way to get up there, honestly, than using that little railing system. But we managed to get on top, that's what would matter. Whoa, hello. Alright, cool. I picked up. It was a little quick, but you'll have to trust me that there was a gold coin. Motherfuck, I'm off my rhythm here. There was a, uh, there was a gold coin in the middle of one of those platforms that I kind of accidentally grabbed with my tongue, but it still fucking counts. I'll take it. Alright, now that we're back in the game here, back in the game session. Gotta get back, get back in the mindset here. This little room is kind of weird, but hey, it's not so bad when you have invincibility. Very nice. As you might guess, these weird chompy guys are bouncing around all over the place, and in order to progress forward, we need to dispose of all of them. This last one's being a thing he's holding out on us. Let's see if I can jump it. Uh, he's very slowly receding down. There we go, cool. Now it's open. Cool. Grab this guy. And I don't- Oh, another slow motion one, of course. Well, maybe I'll speed it up by jumping. Ah, just barely, barely not fast enough to catch that. Eh, but no worries, it just keeps on coming back, and there's no, um, no hurry. Thankfully, it's not these platforms are having to move back and forth or anything, just swinging to and fro. And now, here we are. Nice little teeter-totter action, nothing too crazy. At a couple of strange enemies here, when I did my test run, I actually found that they are extremely hard to avoid if you get too close. Like, you'll kind of you'll kind of see they uh, they follow your movement on the x-axis almost perfectly, so they're really hard to avoid if you get in range. But their facial expressions, I just I, I love them. I love them so much. It reminds me of Ezekiel from Aqua Teen Hunger Force, that episode where there's like a mini shake, 
He's rocking around. That that's the face that he makes all the time. That's what it reminds me of. So for those who enjoy Aqua Teen Hunger Force, maybe this is the Ezekiel's humble beginnings. Who knows? Ah, uh, jeez. All right. Ah, oh, shit. I was hoping to grab that coin before he snagged me. Well, not to worry. We've got a couple health pickups coming up right here. That'll do just the trick. Just gotta hop up here, which is a little well hidden, but honestly, kind of obvious when it comes to where bonus is and bonus items tend to be hidden. Oh, lag! What's going on? There we go. All right, moving right along. There's still a couple more things in store for us. Um, if you really want to, you can like you can just kind of see in the bottom part of the screen that there's another platform. There's a better view of it. You can jump to it, but honestly, it's a lot easier to just grab the item with your tongue. Now, with this spot up here, oh, I've got the short tongue, but that's okay. Just use these things to jump up top. It's kind of hard to grab that one at just the right angle, but if you can get it and get up this spot, you're rewarded with a number of things, as we can see. Lots of health, a gold coin, and a couple of other things. Nice little things to help us on our way. Oh, shit, I should have kept the invincibility. What was I thinking? Oh, and it gave me slow down again. Nah. Oh, well, no worries. At least we now have all the carrots, of course, and I'll just grab that gold coin. And here is the mini game of which I spoke earlier. So, let's do this. We've got all five carrots. Need to think carefully. Let's do this thing. And this is an interesting little puzzle. It's framed as kind of a um, chess game. I'll let the rabbit explain it, where we have all these chess pieces with different values associated to them. And d oh, shit! That's actually counting down the timer. Oh, crap! Oh, shit! Oh, damn it, that sucks. Um, alright, you'll just have to take my word for it then. For this one, we actually have a number of things where you can see in the up in the top right, we have a point value associated with it. We can see that there's times five and plus two and minus one and things like these. So you have... It's kind of a, a question of like, how can I get the highest point value from a single tongue maneuver? So we see right there, plus one, plus one, one plus, one, plus one, times three, so it's three, times three is nine. You gotta get the biggest bang for your buck. If you just scoop up everything, then you will... Oh shit, I just scooped up a... Uh, oh crap, and there's... Right there, that's a times five by itself, which does us nothing, because zero times five is still fucking zero. But it's actually a pretty cool little minigame, and hey, look at that, I beat a hundred, because that's, that's the minimum score that you need to beat. Excellent, there we go. You can see that the... Previous one, I did much better at 175, but as long as you beat 100, you are in good shape. But, yeah, this is an interesting little, little, uh, I don't know, wouldn't really call it a math puzzle per se, but a nice little different type of minigame where you have to use your brain more than anything, trying to get the highest point value. Again, highest bang for your buck for the tone maneuvers. And, of course, there's a little piano or keyboard where you can actually make legitimate tones based on the keys that you're standing on, so, hey, that's kind of realistic, right? Another example of kind of a fun little bonus thing that the developers probably threw in just because, eh, fuck it, why not? Now, this looks like an area that you should be able to enter, but you cannot. There's nothing in here. So sad. Um, there's nothing up top, either. Um, we have eight. I guess that's okay. There we are. But once you have invincibility, this part really isn't so bad. In fact, I'm going to leave that star item alone, because we don't need that shit. Get in out of here. Now, we're coming up on... Oh, yes, this guy. This... This, this crocodile who's just happy as can be. Oh, shit, he managed to snag me. But he's just so happy. Look at his eyes. He's just happy as hell. Chomping on this wooden board. And he has no teeth. I guess that's what chomping on wood will get you these days. And now we're on a robot. Hot damn, I love robots. Now, there's not a whole lot to be said here. There is a little... There's a health pickup right off to the side here, but honestly, it's not worth it, especially if you have full health already. It's really hard to get to, though, so... To me, it's not worth the risk. Now, this leg... We'll dip down, or this knee rather, and there's a gold coin right here. How convenient. That brings us up to 10. We are halfway through this bad boy. Luckily, the other leg does not do any crazy maneuvers, so we can use this one, or knee, I guess. Everything below the knee to jump up to this conveyor belt kind of thing. Actually, doing really good on health, so I'm going to be leaving behind lots of health pickups in the off chance that I end up needing them at some point. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we are. Actually, I, I did that as a reflex. You actually can't use your tongue to grab onto the conveyor belt here because, again, you can't actually grab onto surfaces that themselves are moving. In this particular case, like like in the, like uh, as these little present boxes are a good example, I can't tongue onto these because they're moving. So it's it's the tongue system is a lot better in this game, but it's not completely um, robust. It does have some limitations now. Normally, present for you, you would be inclined to jump on top of that thing, but if we do that, we miss out on a gold coin, so you kind of have to skip down here with your umbrella. 
your very brown, oddly colored umbrella, which I guess fits with the motif. Ooh, those bright colors actually kind of hurt the eyes. This game is a colorful game almost to a fault. It's kind of painful at times. Toy hunger! They hunger. They hunger for your soul. Not really. This, uh, this part's actually pretty harmless. Um, there really isn't anything else on the outside, but like I said, there was this one gold coin. So if you were to jump, go ahead and jump on that little platform that I pointed out beforehand, then you would have screwed yourself out of getting a bonus coin. Because what happens is you jump here, it catapults you into here, and you actually can't escape through normal means. You can't, like, jump out through the glass or anything. In fact, you can't even climb on the walls that you jump. There's a gold coin in here, thankfully, and hey, look at this! Little throwback, throwback Thursdays to uh, to the old school chameleon twist layout or uh, design for chameleon. That's kind of cool. Just just kind of bumps, jumps up when you get when you get near him. Kind of nice. So nice little Easter egg. Um, I think this is supposed to look like the current chameleon variant, but he kind of reminds me of Yoshi, honestly, with the green color. Ouch! <laughs> the green colors and the red shoes. I actually never realized you could get crushed by that thing. Well, shit. Now I have to wait for it. The idea is that you use the scoop to leave this little area. To leave the toy hunger. Here we go. So it comes down, scoops us up. It's like one of those crane game type of things. We all remember those as children. There we go. And it teleports us out. Present for you is freedom. In fact, if you try and jump back in, it just boots you out. Now here, there we go, a little falling card. So there's going to be another section very similar to this one that's actually a tremendous pain in the ass. It is really difficult. That one wasn't so bad, but there's one more of those types of falling card deals that is extremely difficult. My god, it took me way more falling down hits than I would have preferred. The good news, however, is that we're moving right along. We've got left and right that we can go. Of course, the correct path is left, so we want to go right first and pick up the gold coin. Again, it's Nintendo 64 era platformer logic where if there is a clear direction to go, you should first go the wrong direction because you want to make sure you get everything. Especially if it's a 100% run, much like this one. I love all the facial expressions, by the way, on these guys. I like this guy. I like the yellow one. N number three. His facial expression is my favorite. Just very... He's he's disappointed, but not straight up pissed. This guy's pissed. Two ain't having none of that. Three is just... Or no, five, rather. He's kind of innocuous. This guy, he's just mischievous. I wouldn't trust him. But here we are again with three. This guy... This guy knows what's up. This... This right here is the falling card thing that I was talking about. It is a pain. I don't have a good strategy for this, honestly. What I do, sort of, is jump up top and run as long as I can. Eventually, you'll notice that you're not really able to run anymore. Shit. Ah, fuck. It's not a matter of just running full speed ahead, because that will not do it. And it's not a matter of just jumping constantly either, because that won't do it either. Fuck. Ugh, this is tricky. There's really no way to do it that's, like, consistently viable. There we go. You might notice that there are some times where, like, you'll hear me doing the jump, though. Like, you'll hear the, joint, the jump sound effect, but I'm actually not leaving the cards. There we go. One more jump, and tongue. There we go. So that's the thing. You kind of have to scrape by just barely enough to get one last really good jump at the end, right before the cards completely crumble. Then use your tongue to grab the platform at the very, very end, and you should be in good shape. Now, with this little platforming puzzle, it's not so much a puzzle. It's more of a memorization game. Because this is my third time playing this level today, <laughs> I know this pretty well, so... If you step on the wrong one, they'll just flip you over. So the correct order is right, left, right, left. There we go, yes. Uh, oh, and I'll use this. I guess I'll show it right now. Yeah. This is where the carrot was. So you saw from... You might have noticed from my previous um, editing efforts that, yes, here's where it was. So to get to it, you just jump down from the little... What you call it? Oh, shit. That's actually okay. From the... Uh, checker or chessboard. So, because this is just a chessboard and we've already seen one chess themed thing here, we have to kill the king, as is often the case in chess. Ooh, man. Fuck, man. Ah, shit! These guys are, uh, these guys are really uh, stalking me well. The enemies that you're picking up here move by conventional means, and man, I can't actually get out of them. They, uh, what I'm hoping to do is just do single shots. To, uh, to hit the king a couple of times. It takes, I think, six or seven hits. It takes a lot of hits to bring it down. But man, these enemies crowd you really quickly. And even though li their movement is restricted, I mean, in the case of the bishop, he can only move diagonally. In the case of the rook, he can only move, um, I guess, through Cartesian directions, or, you know, left and only left and right, up and down. Or, rather, yeah, yeah, left, right, up and down. I said that right. Um, yeah, it's really tricky. Okay, fuck, got him. I don't shit. Once you kill them, all, once you kill all of them, make sure you get the gold coin, of course. I believe I did earlier without really saying it. 
and this little area opens up. Fuck, man, these eyes, these little assholes are jerk bags. All right, come on, get down here. Shit! Oh, can I get up? All right, cool. Man, that part is a lot more difficult than I think it should be. If I had to guess, they probably didn't intend for that to be so difficult. Now, more little dices that roll on their own, but nothing too ridiculous. One more. There we go. Cool. This last one takes us all the way to 55. We've got two gold coins left. Let's make this motherfucker count. I think there's one, I think, in this area. Nothing too bad. Yeah, I gotta be careful not to get squished by these motherfuckers. Oh, shit. I'm... Actually, I think the world... Ba okay, yeah, we're good. Ah, uh, crap. I know there's there's a gold coin somewhere over here. Oh, no thank you. Is it over here? Yes, ouch, still got squished. Oh, it's, I'm glad that thing actually gave me full health. I completely didn't notice that the first time around, but I'm glad I noticed that. Oh, this time, shit. Is that it for the gold coins? I feel like there might be one more in this area, but... God, the back area of this dice thing is very congested relative to the others. Uh, I think that's... I guess that's it. I guess I would have seen something by now. Okay. Yeah, I'm willing to call it. I'm willing to call that's it. Oh, shit. Okay. It's gonna keep going. Yeah, it's gonna keep going. Fuck, now I gotta get it back. Okay. Alright, let's go back around. Oh, this is stressful. Ah, oh, fuck, he got me on the corner. Alright, we got this. Alright. Uh, where's... The, I keep trying to remember. Where's the last coin? I'm really concerned now. So I can't actually remember where this last one is. For this, for these flips, I definitely prefer the underhanded ones. Not just because you don't have a lot of room to work with, so it seems to work better that way. Oh, I remember now. Here we go. Watch for this bird thing. If you jump too soon, you will take damage, but... Whoa! I've never seen that happen before. Let's try that again. There we go. Now once you're up here, jump back down to on top of the birdhouse and get the 20th coin. Hot diggity daffodil. Oh, shit. Whoa, now that's interesting. I've never noticed this before. His plat his bouncy platform is gone. I hope it... Oh, now this is a problem. Well, I uh, don't have any way to get back up now. Maybe if I walk away, it'll respawn or something? I've actually never seen this before. Let's see. It's like... Oh, shit, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, well. Actually, maybe it's better this way, yeah. Reset this part of the way. Yeah, now I'm a little concerned. Oh, and actually, overhand, overheaded flips worked just as well that time as well. And shit, I... Oh, there it is. Okay. Whew, man, I was really worried for a minute there. All right, cool. Now we're up here. I think there's one more health pickup. Here we go. Here's the rabbit to tell us. We got boss fight coming up, man. We used the airplane this time around. No, None of the, like, stereotypical boss transportation platforms that we're used to seeing. Something. Damn it. Could really use some health. I'm only at five health. And this boss is actually pretty challenging. Might have my first on screen game over, but oh well. I'm gonna deal with that when the time comes. <laughs> Again, this is my third time fighting this boss today, so I think I've got a pretty good handle on it. But he's relatively challenging. Um, he's not quite as much of a pain in the ass as the previous boss is. He's not quite as. It doesn't quite take as long to beat him. But he's still challenging. At least I think so. So he has three attacks, one of which is this little claw dragging attack, where he, yeah, drags his claws in the bottom. Ah, oh, fuck, that's the thing! There's, there's, every once in a while, if he, if he times it just right, or if you time it just wrong, I guess, um, you'll actually get caught in the upswing from when he raises his arms back up. But anyway, his second attack is shooting these little toy robots at us. And then the third one is shooting a cannon at us. Cannonballs, rather. The cannon shot, as you might expect, does a fuck ton of damage. God damn it! There's a fuck ton of damage, um, relative to the individual robot little doohickeys that he shoots at us. Also, one thing to note is that when he does his arm dragging thing, it d destroys all the robots that he had on the field. So it's kind of a good way to cleanse, cleanse the palette, I guess. Oh shit, I had, my, had a good rhythm going there. Yeah, the little mini robots obviously don't do a lot of damage, they're- oh fuck. Yeah, that's the other thing too. And as he- as he receives more damage, he starts- fuck, dude! Not a one hit, shit! He starts increasing the frequency with which he fires them. Now, yes, I'm really in trouble, and I got screwed over so many times by that arm upswing thing. It's just, it's very, uh, it's kind of random because he changes the amount of time he spends with his arms lowered each time, so it's never the same. Um, there is a pattern to it, but honestly, it's it's pretty, uh, okay, it should be good. Yeah, there we go. Oof. 
Number number three. Oh shit! I thought he was gonna fire a third one. Oh crap! Crap! I knew it. Yeah. I, I, right as he was lowering it, I was I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Okay, so that's what the game over screen looks like. In that case, I'll say it was on purpose. <laughs> this was all a ploy to get you to see the game over screen. But like I said before, even if you have the game over, it saves all of your progress thus far. If you use continue, if you use say continue, I don't think you have a limited number of continues. I don't think. Although I'm not wanting to stick around to find out for myself. So, here we are again. Um, honestly, I think I'll probably just skip ahead. Or I'll do like a fast forward thing. Because you've seen pretty much all there is to see with this boss fight. There's really not a lot of new stuff to see. So, here we go. Fast motion engage right now. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, can I come on, damn it? There we go. All right, cool. So yeah, that boss is a challenge. Like I said, I'm left with two hits left. Not a whole lot of room for error, so he is definitely a challenge. Um, that armor thing, that, god, that really pisses me off that it screwed me over like that, but oh well. We beat it, we got all the gold coins, we got the carrot, you are perfect, we got a new costume, everyone is happy. Let's see what this new costume looks like. It is a, oh, a, a gentleman suit, or a business suit. You know, uh, well, actually, it's interesting, yeah, I guess it's... I guess that's just the idea, it's just a business suit, smoking jacket, that kind of thing. Not smoking jacket, sports jacket, that kind of thing. Cool! Well, this will be a good one, a fitting way to round out the game. The next level that we have on the docket is Pyramid Land. This is the last one of the game, folks, so this is going to be it. I had mentioned before that once you get all 20 gold coins that's that you unlock new costumes, I don't think there's like a 7th level uh, boss rush thing of any sort. I could be mistaken, but I don't believe there is. I think it's just the costumes. But in any case, we're, we've still got the last main level ahead of us. I don't, so I think this, the next one will probably be the last video. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time with Chameleon Twist 2's conclusion with the Pyramid Land. I shall see you guys then.